Friday. Another fine day here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm glad to see it. Hope everyone is well today and able to get out and enjoy this music today. And staying out the way. I just had to say that today. Because people will try you. And I think it's more or less what's behind the people. That's really what's trying you spiritual aspect of it. So it's like whenever you make strides in the kingdom of the Most High, here comes some evil to try to set you back. But what I've learned in the process, because it's a process of learning, is that you have to stay out the way. I get this saying from one of my sons. He, he's been saying that for over a year. And I'm sure it's, it's been out there longer than that, but it's something that I've been hearing and it really touched me spiritually, I guess you can say, or opened my eyes to how the spiritual world works and it's understanding that we don't fight against the flesh and blood of this world but against the principalities that's behind them and the overall evilness or evil behind folks but I say this today because well it ain't, it ain't no need to even bring up this situation because when I bring it up, I'm giving power to it. So I just leave it at that. Stay out the way. And basically like a saying that I like from one of the um, freedom fighters or freedom riders. I think it was John Lewis. He said, get into some good trouble. So in staying out the way, get in the right way, get in the way, which is the Most High's salvation, which, which is the Husha, which means the Most High's salvation, or Yah's salvation. But I just wanted to share that quick thought. And to go on to my thought of the day, and it is, the writing is on the wall, can you see it? The writing is on the wall, can you see it? <clears throat> and this is coming out of Daniel 5, the whole chapter, and I took some chapters, I mean some verses out, or strips out pretty much highlighted them for the, the story. But it's the story of Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar's son, and evidently he didn't get the memo from his father's meet up with the Most High. And see, if my father had became dumb as an uh, animal went crazy and was, was lost his mind basically and was out in the field eating grass as a as an ox or a horse would and grew hair like an ox or a horse did past and then turn around after seven years and regain his kingdom because of course he lost his kingdom but to regain his kingdom and then to give credit to Daniel's God or Daniel's Elohim in the most high and said that there is no other God but Yahuwah the most high Elohim now if my father went through all of that I would know not to um, 
step on the toes of that entity or that Elohim or that God. But Belshazzar was an idiot. And you can see it by his lifestyle. He was throwing a party for all the, they said ladies, the, I mean women, and um, his folks, he was throwing a big banquet. And they also said that they was um, drinking lots of wine. Or it, I think he said it was a banquet for a thousand people. So he was partying it up. And it, and it put emphasis on they was drinking great wine. So you know when you do anything overboard, you're going to get the results overboard. But anyway, what he did is he got tipsy and, and said, let's grab the, um, the vessels of gold from the temple of the Hebrew gods that we um, plum plundered. So they pulled out the most highest vessels and started drinking drinking wine out of and partying with. And all of a sudden, a hand right a hand started scribbling on the wall. Now Bell Cesar, just as myself would would have been, <laughs> was quite terrified. And I'm sure at a point in his terror, he, he resorted back to the memory that his father had. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Because his first thing was calling all the wise men together to read the writing on the wall. And when they couldn't do it, his wife remembered Daniel. Well, Daniel is a, um, a very wise man, and basically you should seek out Daniel and see what he has to say on the matter. And the king said, made a decree that whoever told him what the writing was on the wall, that he would bless him and give him the status of the third, third man in charge, if you would like to say, in the kingdom. So when Daniel showed up, Daniel was like, no, King Belshazzar, you keep your silver and gold and your fine clothes and even your status for yourself. And did, why didn't you learn the lesson from your father's experience with the Most High? And of course, Daniel told him that he had perpetrated the fraud. Um, using the most highest vessels like he did and basically told him that his kingdom had come to an end. The writing on the wall basically said that you have been you have been weighed on a scale and you are wanted. Your kingdom will be given to the Medes and Persian, which is like China and the Turks, if I'm not mistaken. But anywho, I thought all of that, he was very sad, but he went on and gave Daniel what he had, he had promised. And as being a king, you have to keep your word. And the Most High had to keep his word. Belshazzar died that night and his kingdom was given over to the kingdoms that the Most High said were going to be given over to and I think it was media but I, I put the scripts in the um, I put the scripts in the recording but see we have found ourselves as America in the same position and I say we, but I should say America has found itself in the same position where she has taken God's most precious vessels, some honor and some of dishonor, but 
and trifles and being his chosen people and his children. See, the Most High did punish us by scattering us all over the earth to all the nations of the earth. But he said when he did this, the, um, in the script it says that our captors basically did too much. They was too harsh on us and the most high has to punish them for it. Because really slavery wasn't a harsh thing back in the days. It was basically like if I owed a debt I could come work for you and pay you off at the same time make a, a living and still have my family and my children there with me. But in this nation and in most of the nations around the world, they took us in as slaves, but they trifled us. They basically totally destroyed us. Hey, let's get it. people sitting around 
around with masks on their face. Ain't nowhere near other folks. And I've heard a doctor say that that is gonna be one of the main reasons why folks' immune systems are compromised. I guess you could say I just been sitting here talking to myself thinking I'm recording. And I don't know how far it went back, so I'm gonna just continue on with my conversation with myself. <laughs> and if it records, it records, and if it don't, it, 